so here we are, just moments away from lunch. So I realize that I'm in this precarious spot where you're hungry and you perhaps are maybe ready to, to move on. So I want to share with you one last thing that is actually really exciting to me. And that's to talk about some of the data that we see and that we work with on a regular basis. Now, Jan just told us a little bit about the work that we're doing to contribute back to the community of their open source and standards commitments. And there's one other area, which is our commitment to freeing the data that we have and giving it back to you so that you can make better decisions and become more efficient in the jobs that you are doing, whether as creating content or as a developer. So with that, I'm, I'm really excited to give you a little sneak peek of the first State of the Media report, which we're going to be releasing next week. Now, I want to, as we started going through this effort, we wanted to enable you to see a little bit about what's happening outside in the, in the internet. The internet is weird. There's a lot of things going on. And we want to make sure we can, of course, do this with a very privacy-centric model. We want to make sure that we are being very secure about our data, but also in a way that we can share that data in an aggregate form and provide insights. As I started going through this, you, like me, uh, I would assume, uh, probably had a mental model of desktop and mobile. At least I did. And I, I always assumed that, well, mobile's, of course, it's the thing. Uh, mobile is going to take over desktop, and desktop is going to fade to the, into the sunset one day. And one of the first insights as I was looking at this data was that if we were to look at the data as a consumption pattern normalized by a time of day, they, in the morning, of course, people get up, they get their coffee, go to work, and they sit on their laptop, do emails, and I see that desktop traffic starting to creep up. That's that dark blue. But mobile traffic is there as we you know, go to work and are at work. And at the end of the day, you know, the desktop traffic starts to peter out, and mobile picks up again in the evening as we're sitting around watching Netflix. But you notice that desktop doesn't drop off, not until you know, midnight or so when people go to sleep. Desktop is there all along. And, and the insight that I had as I was looking at this, and you're probably thinking, well, yeah, duh. That for me, it was, well, desktop is no longer those gray boxes sitting at our desk. They're our, our laptops. We use our laptops when we're on the subway, when we're in the Uber, when we're at Starbucks, that really our laptops are really just another form of mobile devices. We see about 30% of our cellular traffic coming from laptops tethered to the internet. This is a very important detail when you look at how do we go forward and build creative content. It's important when we talk about how are we building our websites. Responsive web is very much alive today, and we have to be thinking about not just about mobile versus desktop, but this continuity of widescreen landscape environments to portrait environments. As I started uncovering the, the package and looking a little bit further down, you know, I was looking at browsers and saying, oh, okay, who's, what are the browsers out there? And of course, we see the usual suspects, Chrome and Safari taking up most of the traffic. And of course, you see uh, Firefox and Edge as those uh, in the top levels. And, and depending on the country, this, these ratios are slightly different. But that corner, look at that bottom corner. There's a lot of small boxes. And as I started digging down into that, you see that boxes start going down even deeper and deeper and deeper. Where does this stop? And there's a lot of very weird and interesting things out of this. So I want to share with you three big areas that uh, I think are important for us as we look forward. First is the role of what I call word of mouth apps. These are not the apps that you've downloaded uh, for a brand. These are not the web, but these are the apps that we use to talk to our friends, to talk to our spouses. These are WhatsApp and Slack. And these apps are actually engaging in your website and your brand in a very interesting way. Here we have the traffic uh, throughout a week in aggregate form. And you see that Slack, people share links, the websites that they visited, the great article, this new, uh, this new brand, this new uh, product that's on sale. And you can see the blue there, 
as you probably expect, Slack is a very much a workday event. It peters out in the, in the evenings, and it's not very present as far as traffic in the weekends, but during the weekdays, there's a lot of sharing. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's those little thumbnails that show up when you post, when you post a little link in your group chat, there's a little thumbnail with a little tag below it. Those, that is an interaction with your brand, and it's a form of word of mouth because that's what's really resonating, not this top search Google results, but what people are talking about to their friends. And WhatsApp, in contrast, you can see that daily all the way through. You actually, it's quite interesting because you see two little humps, this bimodal effect of in the morning as people are getting ready for, uh, for the day, and in the evening, they're talking with their friends. But it's constant all the way through, which got me wondering about social, these, these kind of apps, these word of mouth apps. And I rec recall recently, actually, I was, Saying, sending a message to my wife and saying, hey, you want to try out these new adult gymnastics? I've never done gymnastics in my life. Do you want to try it out? And then they've got a beautiful website, beautiful brand, and, but the little thumbnail that I got was just this blurry you know, favorite icon. That's not very engaging. Because I've seen other examples, like this, you know, the wire cutter, they're talking about, hey, this, what, uh, what should you purchase for your bike racks? Now you'll notice here that the Website on the left, there's only one bicycle. Do you notice the thumbnails? They've got two bicycles. What's going on here? This is because these word of mouth apps are a type of browser. They're part of those very small thumbnails, but when you share them with your friends, it's going out and making a request to the web and looking at the content and looking for microdata. These are ways that you can engage not just the thumbnail of the subject headline, but to give these word of mouth apps a little bit more of a hook to draw your users in and to say, hey, come on, take a look at this. I mean, I'm sure you've had the experience of getting out of the grocery store and looking at your phone and, oh my gosh, there's 100 messages from this group chat. What's going on? You're scanning through it. These are the hooks that will entice the, in that group chat to oh, click on that link and move on. And so this is microdata. Very important. And so there's, what are we, how can you engage your users in mo uh, better ways? But the second area in those small squares of users of, is mobile apps. And in fact, we see a lot of traffic coming from native apps. And these native apps are not this war of mobile web versus de of mobile apps, but rather a complement. These are, you know, your brand has loyal followers. And those loyal followers have downloaded your app to get a richer, better experience, because they are loyal to your brand. And you are providing them a great experience, just like on the web, with videos and images. But are you giving them a superior experience? And as we see, there's a lot of traffic coming from the, your mobile apps, and there's a lot of opportunities by using things like Heath and other great technologies to a, greater, a richer experience, using, uh, giving you access to wide gamut photography, and, uh, but yet smaller images. And these are the opportunities available to you. So that's mobile apps. And the third area that's just interesting is to look at where users are consuming. What are people actually yearning for and looking at? And that last area, particularly as we're getting ready for lunch here, is a look at uh, video. This is an interesting phenomenon that we started looking at an industry, looking at the food and beverage industry. And these are the restaurant uh, you know, sites or perhaps the places where you can purchase food uh, and you get a little thumbnails. Now, a lot of these sites have images and videos, as you expect. But there's an interesting phenomenon that I observed in, in three countries, India, Singapore, and, uh, and Sweden. And I'm not sure really what's going on here, other than there is a demand by users when they are hungry. You can see the spikes of traffic around lunchtime, around dinner time. Users are not just looking for the place to go to the restaurant or what they want to order, but they are willfully watching video. They're looking, their, their lizard brain is saying, I'm hungry and I'm making a decision based on how much video content is there. I think these are some of these interesting trends that are emerging 
as, and they should give us hints about how can we better interact and better engage with our users. And I'm gonna talk, I've got a workshop later this afternoon uh, talking about video on the web and how we can uh, do this better and more efficiently. So these are three areas that uh, I just wanted to highlight about word of mouth apps, what you can do for our native apps, and, and of course video as a tease uh, to bring in a, a, engaging users. We've got a lot more insights coming. I'm really excited about this work and hope we can provide more of these data insights uh, to you on a regular basis. Uh, so next week, stay tuned to hear more about the state of the visual media.